Hi, I'm Dennis Lehane, and this is Trailers from Hell. Um, the movie I'm introducing is Jonathan Demme's Something Wild, which is from 1986. And uh, I think there are there are two Jonathan Demme's. There's the Jonathan Demme who existed before Silence of the Lambs, and the Demme who existed after Silence of the Lambs. And one of them uh, was a lot more fun. And I think it's the one who directed Something Wild and Melvin and Howard and Married to the Mob. And uh, Something Wild to me is the high point. It's the, it's the watershed movie. It's a very strange movie. It has the first half is a complete screwball comedy. The second half is a very, very dark look at everything that went wrong with the American dream under Reagan. It is, um, it's Ray Liotta's, uh, I don't know if it's his screen debut, but it's the first time you really notice him on the screen and he blows the entire movie up. He walks into the middle of it and he takes it from a comedy to a very pitch black drama. Um, it stars also Jeff Daniels and Melanie Griffith. And it is, um, it is unlike any movie you have ever seen before since they've never made another movie quite, quite like something wild. Dear sirs, in response to your inquiry, stocks acquired before 1 January 84 should not be uh, subject to anti straddle rules. Charles S. Driggs, upwardly mobile, uh, recently uh, promoted. House in the suburbs, father of two. The usual closing, Charles history. At 2.30 on a Friday afternoon, what's about to happen to Charles is something wild. I'm Lulu. Charles, pleased to meet you. Ah! Wait, 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 where, where, where are we going? Another thing about Something Wild is, is like all uh, early early Demi films, and again, this is the this is the acme, the height of it all, is it has the great one of the greatest soundtracks of sort of counterculture 80s music, not the, not the 80s music you, you're used to hearing. It has like Oingo Boingo on it. It's just a, a killer soundtrack. It's an amazing song by the Motels, and it's all perfectly synced in. Uh, and I think three versions of Wild Thing. <laughs> if you were my mother and I brought this guy home as my husband, what would you think? Very nice. But um, I'd get rid of those handcuffs if I were you. Wild Thing. Do I look like the kind of guy who would run out on a check? I mean, come on. <laughs> wow, Here's Ray Liotta showing up. Um, it's the first time Jeff Daniels ever sees him in the movie. And again, I, you, you can't say it enough. When he shows up in this movie, it, the entire movie, it's like, it's like a skip across a record, and everything changes. If he opens his mouth about any of this, and believe me, he will, I'm ruined. You're a great girl. And you're loaded with potential, but you're too much for me. Charlie, you gotta fight for a woman like this. Jeff Daniels is interesting because he becomes, in some ways, he's everything that the movie is railing against. He's a stockbroker. He's very much representing the sort of um, uh, go-go 80s in terms of uh, what would ultimately cause the crash in the late 80s, uh, financially speaking. And... Um, and Ray Liotta, who's the villain of the piece ostensibly, is actually, he's, he's, he's the working class coming to bite you in the ass. 